Saturn is a really beautiful planet for starters. The rings are iconic and everybody can picture what Saturn looks like in the night sky. And as the seasons change and as the tilt of the rings change, you get a different view of Saturn every time, which is very special. Now we've been there a couple of times before, back in the late 70s and the early 80s with the Pioneer and Voyager spacecrafts, but Cassini is the first dedicated orbiter. And Pioneer and Voyager just gave us a taste of what was gonna come with Cassini. And we really needed to go to Saturn because we just simply can't get the kind of images and the kind of data from the Earth that we can if we go up close. So Cassini was really first thought about in the early 1980s and it wasn't launched till 1997 and then it didn't get to Saturn until 2004. And so people who plan and build spacecraft invest a lot of time and often people who are in their mid to late careers are planning spacecraft that aren't going to even launch until after their retirement. So there's a certain amount of pay forward and, and pay back in terms of that, that process. So we went there with certain questions. We wanted to chart the magnetic field of the planet. We wanted to examine the moons. We wanted to land on Titan, which we did successfully. But we've also had many surprises. So for example, in charting the moons of Saturn, we discovered many more moons, and we also discovered that one of the moons, Enceladus, is producing geysers of water vapour from cracks on the surface. And things like that are discoveries that are totally unexpected, and they can change the course of a mission. I started my PhD back in 2003, and that was when Cassini was just on its way to Saturn. It arrived in July of 2004. And I had the immense privilege, which I probably didn't even appreciate it at the time, of working with Cassini data from the very beginning of my PhD. So my supervisor was part of the magnetometer team, which is the instrument on the spacecraft that measures the magnetic field. And so I was analysing that data throughout my PhD and my research has been to study the magnetic field, to study the aurora, like the northern and southern lights on Saturn. And so having spent most of my waking hours for the last 13 years thinking about Saturn, it's going to be quite strange for Cassini to no longer be actively taking data, but I think it is important to emphasise that the mission doesn't end on the 15th in the sense that the data will be there and will be actively analysed for many, many years to come.